God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. So I take this opportunity to welcome all of you and especially those who are visiting today to our service this morning. I am sure this is the day that the Lord has made and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. And therefore, we are going to rise as we are able so that we together sing the processional hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past on this 20th Sunday after the Pentecost. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Mighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will join together in the song of praise. Glory to God in the highest. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. So let us all join in the collect that is appointed for the day. Mighty and everlasting God. Increase the faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, and make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
So, we take our seats for the reading of the lessons. which is in the Apocrypha, beginning in the 35th chapter and the 12th verse. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it. And do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice, for the Lord is the judge. And with him there is no partiality. He will not show partiality to the poor, but he will listen to the prayer of one who is wronged. He will not ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join me in reading Psalm 84 responsibly. I'll read to the asterisk, and you can finish the verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the course of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. I am sad and is O Lord of hosts. My King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Whose eyes are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. The epistle this morning is taken from the second book of Timothy. I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the gentles, Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you. And now as we prepare to read the gospel, we we'll rise up as we are able to sing, Thy kingdom come, let us sing verse 1, 2, and verse number 5.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told this parable to some who entrusted themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, and otters, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exhort themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Once more, dear Lord, we are before you this morning so that we look upon you to receive a blessing through your word and we open our hearts unto thee. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So let's take our seats. <clears throat> so once again, it is good uh, to see you and uh, to be in this service this morning. And our God is gracious to all of us. So when I was growing up, and each one of us did that, and in the family, there's something I used to notice. There were some those good siblings and those bad siblings. <laughs> so, so every time we are together there, there is one who was always good, but there was another one who was always bad. Unfortunately, I happened to be that one who was bad. So this is what happened. If anything wrong happened in the, at home, I was the first suspect, you know. <laughs> if anything else bad happened, I became the first suspect. Even though I'm not the one who made it wrong, but that is how we, we grew up. Now I look the story of Luke. For a time we have been, been seeing two characters. Luke chapter 15, we saw the lost sheep and the sheep too. The lost coin and the woman too. The lost son and the father too. Even last Sunday, uh, chapter 18, we saw the unjust judge and the widow too. And even today, we are seeing two people. And I want us to have a story now about those two people. One is good and one is bad. <laughs> All right? <laughs> So, these two people are speaking to us this morning. Maybe it is natural to have good and bad, I don't know. And I don't know how, I don't know in your family when you are growing up whether there was that kind of a thing. So, if water poured on the ground, uh, it's, they looked at me, it's like the bad one is the one who made the water pour down, all those kind of things. It was not with a bad thing, but I don't know how it happened. Now we have the story, a very interesting story, of two people here in the gospel. And what I want us to reflect on when thinking about these two people, I am calling it spiritual isolation. Spiritual isolation. So with the breaking of COVID, <coughs> we began by very quickly isolating ourselves and stay indoor so that all may be well with us. Now, <clears throat> I want us to think about a spiritual isolation. These two people had had an opportunity to go into the temple and pray. Just think realistically about the tax collector. This man, I want to tell you the truth, it took him courage to be able to go to the temple and offer a prayer. 
a lot of courage, a lot of it. In fact, for him to be inside the temple, were it not for that courage, he would not have made it. Why am I saying so? Because the tax collector was a bad man. And therefore, in the system, and especially on the temple, he did not belong. And therefore, for him <laughs> to be in the temple, to say a prayer, was a really very good gesture. It was not that easy for that tax collector to be in the temple. He knew the world out there, saw him as a terrible person, as a very bad person. No one liked tax collectors. He was truly very bad. But see the courage he had. At least, I, I, let me call it a step of faith. A step of faith and being bold enough now to go all the way to the temple, at least to say a prayer. That is wonderful. Now the second man, who belonged, <laughs> he had no trouble in going to the temple because that was his place. And therefore he used to go there regularly. And therefore he did not have any problem to go there. But now the problem I find with this righteous man is that uh, he had also a very wonderful spiritual comfort zone. And therefore for him to go into the temple, it was all comfortable. And when he went there, he did all he was supposed to do. He did his prayers, he did his fasting, he did his giving, he did everything. By the way, if there was the things we do today here, that man was baptized, that man was confirmed, that man had gone through all the religious rituals. He was in his own spiritual comfort zone. Let me tell you something. This man was really telling the truth. Because that is what he was doing. So when he went to pray, he just said the truth. Oh God, you know I do this, I pay my tithe, oh I do everything, I do everything, and therefore oh God I am good. He was telling the truth, and he put a rider, and to make this really true that I am good, I am not like that other tax coin. That is called spiritual comfort zone. My dear friends, <laughs> we could not be different like this righteous man. We may find ourselves in a kind of a spiritual comfort zone and what we will be doing, and we are telling the truth, and true to that, it is the truth, we believe all is well. But it is not. <laughs> Something went missing with this very good and righteous man, despite that he was telling the plain truth. It is not his fault. It is what he has been taught. And he followed the teachings. But he needed one more thing, and that is what failed. And so when he looked at himself, he did not see the things that this tax collector was seeing. This morning, we could be having that kind of a spiritual isolation. And God is speaking to us to see what this tax man did. Although he knew he don't belong, he made his way there, and when he got there, he was so humble, he was down to earth like this, and he said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I know I have done many bad things, I know I am not worthy, I know I do not belong, but God, I come here to you now, so that I may belong. 
I come to you, O oh God, so that I may be forgiven. I come to you, O oh my God, so that I am able to reconcile even with the righteous person. So that we can have a language. I came to you, O oh God, so that I may be loved by the righteous person, that I may also love the righteous person, all for the honor and glory of your holy name. That is what we want. Let me tell you something. The righteous man, because of being in that spiritual comfort zone, was not growing in faith. <laughs> His life was static, just like this. He was not growing anything. We need to grow in our faith. We need to grow. And this is why everything for him was normal. This is why he saw everything for him was good. He did not know that something else lacked in him. Now, <coughs> there are some type of, I don't know what I call them animals, ticks, you know ticks that, that bite cows and they suck blood, you know them? Yes, yes. there is one unfortunate thing with a, with a tick. Because the tick is there only thinking all is well and is continuing to suck blood from the cow and even when the cow goes for slaughter, the tick is not aware that the cow is being slaughtered and the cow is there no more. It continues to suck blood. It thinks all is well until when <laughs> that big head where the tick is goes to the fire and the tick starts feeling the warmth of the fire and start asking what's going on here. <laughs> but that time it is too late. Sometimes that is how we are as Christians. Simply because we are good, we think all is well. Until that moment when something happens, then we start asking, what's, what's wrong with us? We start asking, are we not baptized? Are we not confirmed? Don't we go to church every Sunday? Don't we give our tithe? Don't we do this? Don't we fast? But now all is not well. That is the only thing that now reminds us that we will need to grow so that we are alert. And how does that happen? By humbling ourselves. And although we are good like this righteous man, we don't just qualify that 100%. We continue think, knowing inside of ourselves that something might be lacking. We go after it. We all the time need forgiveness. We all the time need this free salvation. We all the time need the Spirit of the Lord. We all the time need this love of God. All the time we need the power to reconcile with one another. It can only happen when we find our way into the temple by assuming we don't feel like we belong. And we all humility, we find ourselves there and we go before the Lord and tell the Lord, I am not worthy. Make me worthy. I am not good enough. Make me good. I am not loving enough. Make me more loving. I am not very good in reconciling with one another. Make me be able to do that. It will only happen when we are humble. Not when we look at ourselves as good, but when we are humble. For those who humble themselves will be exalted. Those who exalt themselves can only be humbled. Are you in a kind of a spiritual isolation? Or are you in a kind of a spiritual comfort zone? Get the difference between the two. Let us humble ourselves so that we'll be exalted. Amen. as we are able and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten Son of God, the Father of 
Join with me in reading the prayers of the people. Heavenly Father, you have promised to <coughs> hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. Father, enliven the church in its mission. And we may salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care for the earth's resources. We pray for the community. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. In all they act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need. We pray for those whose names are listed below. And if you'd read through and add, as you may see fit, any that you feel need additional prayers. Christine and Matt. Linda. God of hope. Comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who have died and those who mourn. We remember with thanksgiving those who died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Father, into your hands we commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. We praise you for all saints who have entered into your eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. And for our family <laughs> parish list, we pray for those whose names are listed below. We pray for all those serving in the military, for Madison, Brian, Caleb, Justin, and Quincy, for Dennis, Kim, Tim, and Matthew. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. Please join me as we pray for our journey. Lord, thank, thank you for you helping us get to where we are today. We pray for continuing guidance as we travel on our journey of faith. Give us eyes to see the possibilities before us Ears to hear you and each other, and voices to effectively and lovingly communicate with one another. We seek wisdom, Lord, and our decision making, enabling us to get beyond our doubts and uncertainties. Grant us patience and strength on our journey as we seek your perfect will and guidance. We thank you, Lord, for being our guide throughout this journey. Your word. 
word is a lamp for our feet. And now let us confess our sins to God, God of all mercy. We confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied you to each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us. <coughs> Mighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Yeah. And now we may take our seats and uh, have our announcements. <coughs> yeah. Now enough with peace. It is time for the announcements. <laughs> I would say if you're on our Facebook page, like like and share and kind of communicate that way. Invite friends, you can invite friends. So you can do stuff like that if you wanted to. Um, yeah. The flyers and things yeah. like that. So the more the word that you get out for it will be helpful. So. All right. Yes? And have you just seen the flyer that's sitting on Facebook for the Christmas festival? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's there. So it's December 10th, and it features Patrick Lynch and his friends. And uh, it should be a good time, and I'm looking for more help. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> and $15 for adult. Yeah. Uh, and, ten, for and 10 for students. And that is zero for six and under. And zero for six and under. And uh, that includes the meal. Yeah. What about seniors? About the old people. That's most of us. On this side, it's children. All right. So uh, the, the the most important thing is for us, in as much as we can, to give support to this event. And it is going to be our Christmas event. Therefore, let us give it support. Let us bring people. Let us invite people. Let us pass word in all way we can to make it look big. It is you and me who will make it look big. All right? Thank you. So anything else? Yeah, on Sunday, uh, before Michael speaks, because I have just seen your hand, on Sunday is when we decided to have uh, our celebration of the All Saints day and therefore uh, we people are continuing to sign up uh, uh, the list uh, for those whom they want to remember so throughout this week let us be in prayer uh, for that day and it will be here all right yes convention is this Friday and Saturday so you can keep it in your prayers and uh, I think that you, if you want to watch some of it I think some of it's on uh, Facebook or go to the diocesan website, look it up. And you can probably watch some of it. Thank you. Yes? Um, talk about the yard sale yesterday? Yeah, please. No? Okay. Um, thank you to everyone who donated and helped. Uh, raised $230 at the yard sale. 
and collected so many clothing that then now we'll need to get a truck. So uh, the Mallers are working on that because he didn't think we had a lot, but now we're over the amount so that we can, uh, I guess, he'll get a truck. And I think he might be delivering next Saturday. So, um, um, they so, might... so not Friday anymore? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. They had an appointment for Friday, like okay. around lunchtime, um, to go over. Um, and Tammy said she was going to stop by and see if there were any um, last-minute clothing drop-offs. So if you, if you missed it or didn't have, you can always still donate because the delivery isn't until later this week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's a pleasure also again to have one of our own, uh, Linda, who has not been with us for a long time. Maybe you say a word and uh, we, we hear your voice, you know. blessing for me to be here. Uh, God has found me a spiritual home up there in, in Pine Bush, and for that I'm extremely grateful. But it's always good to be back home. Thank you. It's, it's really nice to see you. Maybe we extend the joy of her birthday and we sing her at least one, one time. Happy birthday to her today. And we extend the, the celebration. Who who leads the? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. October birthdays too. Yes. Yeah. Quite a few. Raise your hand if you. Ah. Oh. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Oh my everybody. Anybody else? There were a lot of people. Everybody was born in October. And my son too is in October. Oh my goodness. Wish happy happy to George for us too. So 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 we have to celebrate all those and. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh my goodness. So very nice. So thank you very much. And uh, now we get back to the bulletin. <coughs> So that we rise as we are able to sing our offer to the hymn as we get ready for the Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. I think it is enough. Thank you. 
Hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being sun, moon, and stars, earth, wind, and waters and every living thing you made us in your image and taught us to your, to walk in your ways but we rebelled against you and wandered far away and yet as a mother cares for her children you would not forget us time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love and so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed the good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at the table with his friends. He took bread. gave you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth 
and make us your new creation. The body of Christ, given for the whole, given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to the feast and the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So once more, let us rise as we are able to sing our communion hymn, Just As I Am, without one play. Just 
Yes, I am of thy bread love, the bread lend there I to prove here for us is Now to the prayer after communion, loving God, we give thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So once more, thank you all of you for showing up for this service. God bless you and give you a great week ahead. We will be meeting again here this coming Sunday, same time and same place, for another blessing. If you have time to come, you are most welcome. And so our concluding hymn or our recession of hymn is How Firm a Foundation. Oh, there's coffee, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, and after here, we all proceed to the hall on the other side to enjoy coffee and show she out. and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you. Amen.